Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is Will, and I'm going to be breaking down Nightwalker from Under Night and Birth. The purpose of this video is to show you how do I think of the song and to just dissect the song, show what's going on under the hood. Um, having the ability to reorganize everything, all the chords that are going on, and being able to connect the dots from chord to chord, section to section, makes playing any song significantly easier. I like to think of music theory not as a tool to tell you what you're supposed to do, but rather a way to reorganize everything and to help you recall where everything is. It's like you're looking for a book in a library and you know that everything's alphabeticalized, you know, Finding that book is significantly easier than looking for the book in a pile. I used to think of chords as there's a bajillion chords, they're all in a random pile, but knowing that every chord comes from a certain key makes it significantly easier to tell where you are and to navigate. So I will be going into theory quite a bit in this tutorial. Um, some things that I would hope that you would know how to do already is to know all the notes within a scale. Uh, specifically, we're going to be in B minor, also harmonic minor, and we're going to also be in F and E flat, and that's more or less all we visit in this song. I would hope that you'd know how to make a minor chord versus a major chord versus a diminished chord versus a minor seventh chord and unfortunately I don't have like all the chord notes on screen but you can see what I'm doing and I will be calling out what I'm doing. One other thing I would hope you'd be able to do is to know the chords by the scale degree. So for instance one chord, six chord, four, two, five, one, to be able to like see that all throughout the entire piano. That'd be really useful. That might be an exercise if you're not like comfortable with that. I, I do think it's still a lot of value to have by watching this tutorial anyways, but those types of things are shortcuts for how I think and it makes processing a large amount of information a little bit easier. It does, for me, it took a lot of hard work up front, but once I've gotten comfortable with that, learning new songs was significantly easier. I do struggle when it comes to execution. So some things I do in a certain way because of personal limitations. Uh, think of this tutorial as this is what's happening in a song, not so much as this is how you're supposed to play the song. You can play the song in many different ways. I'm gonna just give you the skeleton and show you why certain things work. With that out of the way, this is the breakdown of Lene's theme, Nightwalker from Under Name Birth. So, like I said, the song is in B minor, sometimes in B harmonic minor. The intro of the song, I'm going to talk about the chord progression. So we do have like all that stuff, right? But the chords are E minor, F sharp 7, B minor 7, G sharp diminish. As far as number and notation, this is 4, 5, 1, sharp 6. this 2-5 uh, because it's a shortcut to like to think about it and in the point of view of G major you know if you're familiar with 2-5s 2-5 is really useful because um, we can 2-5 here type of thing, right? 
so I think it is useful to call it like that, but we'll get to all that going forward. All you gotta know is that this is A minor to like D, maybe D7 if you really want, but D major. The most important thing is that you have this F sharp here. As far as the melody, okay, so this is where it's gonna get a little bit difficult for me. As you guys all know, I play a lot of synthesizers and I have the luxury of not needing to play everything, right? I can lay down a layer where I place the bass and then I can let my fingers go. Really easy to do, well, for me, because I have the muscle memory, it's easy for me to do that with two hands. So the way that I play it, I would love to be able to play like that chord progression that I said. See, I don't know how to finger that. So what I do is a bit of a compromise. I I can't really like speak and say everything that I'm doing with both my hands. You just gotta have to observe. It's not the correct way to do it. <laughs> So take it with a grain of salt. But as far as this arpeggio, I'll talk about the logic as to what's going on. The way that I logically think of it is I split it into two parts. They're mostly in groups of three notes. Two, three, two, three. And I'm gonna break it up where we have like this melody part starting from like this F sharp. You have like this harmonic minor run. And then that's one half of it. The other half is the remainder of the arpeggio. And we're not arpeggiating like an entire chord, like... So instead of thinking, I used to think about it as like, I'm doing like a G major seven, and like, uh, instead of thinking about that, I, I would rather just think about the two notes that I'm using. Yeah, it's a part of this, like this entire chord, but it's a lot easier to remember like these thirds. This is literally the shape that it's gonna be going. So starting from G of like that, F sharp, this major, F sharp, this minor, and then you're gonna have like this A, A minor for the rest of it. So to put it together, So to be able to play that with like one hand, like I said, is really difficult. So what I did in my piano cover of it, which I will be updating and creating sheet music in the future, so just stay tuned for that, is first of all, I played it incorrectly. I, I thought the chord progression was G major to F sharp, but it's actually E minor to F sharp. So essentially what I like to do you just gotta have to watch my hands, I can't really explain it. I'm sorry. It's a little tricky. That 
would be better to do, so that you could just play. I can manage to do that with one hand, but at full speed, it would take me time to practice that, and I wanted to just give this information out, so I didn't have time to like grind that and get the muscle memory. That intro, just practice that. There's many different ways you could do it. Again, if my technical skills were better, if I put more time into like practicing it, the approach I would take is just play it super, super slow. But again, my problem is that I don't know how to finger that correctly because I don't want to like reach like that. And I don't want to bring my thumb over here because then all of a sudden you have to come back down. Something that I myself haven't solved, but hopefully that was information that is useful to you. I'm going to move on to the next section. Uh, oh, before I move on to the next section, I do gotta talk about this. Oh. All that is is just a B minor 9. And what I like to do is, with my right hand, I like to take this, this D major 7, half or, you know, slice of that chord and bring this with me wherever I so need and let this, my left hand, just play the root. All you're doing is going up a half step. Every single note goes up a half step to this C minor 9. Keep that in your back pocket, it's going to come up later in the song. Okay, now I can move on to the next section. So as far as the A section of the song, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the chord progression, then I'm going to play the melody in a basic way, and then I'll just play it in my way. So we have one, six, Four, two, five, and then it repeats. So you wouldn't be voicing it like that because the right hand's gonna be busy playing like I'm going to play the, the melody on its own without the chords in the hand. So it's a bit tricky to describe what's going on with the melody, but some tips that I use to remember what's going on, besides just remembering how it sounds, best tip, is I think about what interval I'm going to, and I can describe how what you're doing with it. For example, I know you're at this fifth, and you're like chromatically uh, you're chromatically approaching the root of the key and chord. And you're like constantly going up to the note, you know, just using the B minor scale. And this time you fall, you know, from a third above, third below, third above. Here you're going from this, this four, which is like the third of this chord, this C sharp diminish, the two chord. This is what I mean about harmonic minor. That's where that comes from. So we're just completing this chord. And the way that I personally like to voice this chord I'll just play it. So on. I'll get to that 
section in a second. So the way that I'm doing the left hand is there's a lot of different ways you can do it. The simplest way is for whatever chord you're playing, just play the root, the fifth, the eighth, aka just the same note, root right there. And it doesn't really matter. The thing I like about this voicing is that since it's just a shell, we're not uh, doing anything with any of the thirds. That's a lot less mental energy I have to spend because I only care about context and rhythm. That's all I care about. So the cool thing is that if this is a major chord, minor, notice how I don't have to change it anything with this hand, so that it makes it really easy. A slightly more advanced way is that's like more closely resembling of the, the actual base of the original track, Shostarito. <laughs> but as far as the voice that I'm using with my hand, the melody is still here and then whenever I have an opportunity, I'm finding the other notes of the chord. So this is B minor. I like to play B minor 7 instead, it just sounds a little bit better. Also, pro tip, when you're using a chord with your right hand, if like that note's already in the bass, you can, as long as it's not the melody note, you can just like omit that and you still get that sound. That just it adds a little bit. It frees up the hand to do this. I could do that, but that doesn't really make sense. So I like to do that. This is just. And again, I like to take a triad when I have like a, a seventh chord or a ninth chord or whatever chord, right? I like to take like a piece of that chord and bring it with me into like an inversion or something. And now, and you could do like fancy stuff too with that technique. All I'm doing is just taking those three notes and just playing that. So a lot of like fancy stuff is just, you just cut it in half and you just play rhythmically with it. And you just sound like really cool. <clears throat> as far as this. So I'm just constantly like, you know, playing the chord whenever it's convenient. Like my hand is just there, so I'm like, okay, cool. This voicing took a while to get used to, like this C sharp. I like playing F sharp, but I like adding the seven. Just a personal taste. That's basically all that's going on. As far as the B section, I'll do the melody first. is the exact same as the intro, like the, the same thing, like four, five, one, sharp six, diminish, four, five, seven, and then that two five, that two five from G. Uh, that's just right there, and then you do the same thing again, and then you do the, you do it twice. Let me play the melody with chords in my hand. Uh, let me go from, nope. So 
sore. <laughs> My head is scared to do the 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 finish. That's the one thing about like this, you know, the shape when it comes to do when it's ugh, when it comes time to do a diminish, you have to like you have to drop this fifth down, and like, I just like hesitate. I gotta work on that as a personal thing. I could talk about the melody a little bit. So as far as the melody, uh, we're still messing around with this fifth, but we're doing an active higher. So this is a harmonic minor. And we're making this nine chord. This is kind of tricky. There's many ways you can do this. You can do this, you can leave that out, you can do that. I mean you're you're essentially making this, you know, chord. You can do that. <laughs> that's basically what's going on. It's again, it's really difficult to describe everything that's going. It's kind of like just memorize what's going on. Just know that you're just using all the scale degrees. Notice how we have like this A natural instead of this A sharp at the second time, you know? So just knowing that for a moment we're like in harmonic minor, and for another moment we're like back to like natural minor. Just little like details like that makes it a little bit easier. This is why it's really important to like know the difference between a flat and a sharp. A little side tangent. It's like, I wouldn't want to call this B flat. That would be really weird because by calling it A sharp, well, one, I know that it comes from like this F sharp chord. Two, I know that when I come down, I know that I'm using A instead of A sharp sometimes. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just a little, little thing to just like make sure that you're like sharp on. Hopefully, all of that made sense. If it didn't, let me know. <laughs> so, as far as the next section of the song, it's the same. Um, is identical to the first section, so um, um, you get that. So you can just apply all that same logic right here, and then when you get out of this section, let me get into it so I can properly set it up to go into like this bridge section. Um, let's see here. get into this the chords are really simple it's just your four chord you can do like you know this or you can do that or you can leave that out or you can play seven like oh excuse me are you playing like major nine minor nine <laughs> yeah <laughs> but all this is just e to b and What's the, this is kind of like B pentatonic, but then you skip the fifth. So. And this makes like the E. What is this? This is. E minor 11. Point being, 
in order to get into this section. Like you're gonna be like instead of ending it like that. That's just how it connects. So again, it's like you're going up B pentatonic. You're skipping this. You're essentially aiming for this A, aka this um this chord. That's the same chord. So that's like the first half of this bridge. And now we're going to have a few key changes. So bear with me here. Um, first of all, we have. part confuses me the most. I'm actually surprised I played it. <laughs> but the way that I think of this section is, um, remember I mentioned that 2 5 is really useful as like a shortcut to retonicize a new key. So all of a sudden we're in the key of F. Um, and we're taking the T chord, and we're fiving. And then the bass walks down, and instead of resolving to that, we go, we do the same thing again, but you know, a whole step down. So now, it's like these two lines are rhyming with each other, right? T5 in the key of E flat, but instead we, go here to E minor to F sharp minor to G minor so we're back to the key of F again and then this part's a bit tricky I, I believe it's like C to like E uh sorry B sus I could be wrong but I feel like that's what's going on I'm not 100% sure <laughs> you'd be surprised when I don't know um as far as the melody. Oh. Notice how that rhymes, right? This section, the way I guess I think of it is, I know I'm starting from the fifth of this key. Or you could think about it from the context of the chord like this. That's, you know, that's a G minor 11. That's 11. But I don't have enough fingers or space to play like everything. I guess you could play like if you really wanted to. So I find it easier to leave off this A. And then you do the exact same thing a whole step down. And the thing that made this part kind of tricky for me, when there's a sudden key change, I kind of get nervous as to what notes are like the right notes. But knowing what it is ahead of time makes it a lot easier. So like if I'm playing this, I know that's like wrong right now. It doesn't sound horrible, but since I know that I'm in E flat major, right? All these notes are safe, right? And I know that I'm approaching the fifth. It's the same line, right? A little trick that I do to remember this because I always forget that to you. I know that the note that I'm pivoting from is going to be a perfect fifth downwards. So even when I'm like, um, I know that 
that's a thing. <laughs> and he even like finished the triad like that. Finish the triad if you want. That makes it a little bit clearer for me to like remember what to do. Not to mention it's exactly the same. This is why scale degrees are really important. If you know the scale degrees, you know that you're two fiving and G. All right, excuse me. You're two fiving and F, and then you know immediately you're two fiving and E flat. You're not resolving to the one, but you know you're just setting that up. Now the second half. So you're back to the original key. So. E minor 9. F sharp. <laughs> minor 7. <laughs> you're resolving like this 13 if you really want to do that, but... And this is a cool musical device. <laughs> Pardon that. This is a cool device where if you have like a pair of minor chords, right? They're a, they're a whole step apart. And then if you have another pair, that's a whole step apart, and then you have another pair so on and so forth. Not only does it like, you know, wrap back around to where you started, but it just has this like effect where it's like lifting. It's like going to like another, um, it's like elevated in a way, a lack of a better term, you know, to express that. But that's all that's happening here. Um, and it's also following like this diminished path. <laughs> if you want. A lot of other songs do that. I could talk like forever about that, but let me not go too far into that. Um, one other thing that I forgot to mention is when you get into this section, um, so this part, Notice that you have an F sharp here. Um, when you when you set up this G, you're really using like this uh, D to to G minor type of thing. That's all I'm doing. I'm just playing D. You can even go like, and that's. I would call that a secondary dominant because since we're in the key of F my uh excuse me F major <laughs> this this dominant chord is called a secondary dominant because well this is a diatonic this isn't this doesn't belong in the key of F like the only dominant chord that we have only dominant by uh, what I mean by that is seventh chord, major seventh, or, sorry, dominant seventh chord <laughs> is is C. So if you see another dominant chord that's like not a part of that key, you can assume that's just a secondary dominant. The cool thing about secondary dominants is that they're always pointing a perfect fifth or or perfect fourth upwards, perfect fifth downwards, they're interchangeable. So you know what you're setting up. Um, I could talk more about that forever too, but I don't want to you know, ramble forever about everything like that. Just note that if you can remember that your target chord is going to be a G minor, the best way to get to any chord is to just play its five chord. So in the key of G, your five chord is D major. So when you're playing this line, you're technically playing like D7 to G minor. You know what I mean? Hopefully that made sense. So that's a, like a little detail that makes like 
Because, like, sometimes when you see sharps that, like, like, kind of, like, it's like, what key is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all that's happening. It's, it's kind of like G melodic minor type thing. Again, <laughs> way too much theory. <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole song anyway, so I can just keep rambling for all I freaking care. So if you have any questions, please, you know, comment anything. One last thing, while I'm on the subject um, of like <laughs> two fives, uh, you, you know this. That's all that's doing right there. Like, you know, you know where that's from. But that's just too far, too far, too far, too far. <laughs> okay. I hope this video helped you. Let me know if it didn't help you. <laughs> and in the future, I'm going to make like sheet music and a new tutorial of this. So until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>